Hi, it's Maria, and I'm doing another Maria Unfiltered, and this is in the Forgiveness to Love series, uh, where my life is exposed. And, um, and today, the title is, we've been going through my forgiveness list, because we all have a forgiveness list of those that we want to forgive. And so we're already on page seven of mine, and this is number 24 of the Forgiveness to Love series. I should have mentioned that before. But anyway, so now we're on page seven of the forgiveness list. And um, this one is about gang stalking and isolating and secret brotherhoods and betrayers and flying monkeys. And you remember the Wizard of Oz and the flying monkeys that the Wicked Witch of the West had doing, carrying on her evil deeds. Well, uh, I would bet that more than a few of us have had flying monkeys and even have them right now <laughs> that are kind of uh, doing things behind the scenes in order to um, sabotage our good fortune. Anyway, um, uh, have you ever wondered um, how uh, to forgive someone? Um, because I had always thought it was when someone says, I'm sorry, and then you say, oh, it's okay, you know, I forgive you, come here, hug, hug, and I know you won't do that again, right? And so, um, have you ever wondered if that's the right way to forgive? Anyway, here I'm continuing to share with you my list of who I need to forgive and why. And um, I confess that for so long I had it all wrong because I truly did let in betrayers again. I let them back in and I thought, oh my God, <laughs> what is the matter with me? Because what do they say? A leopard doesn't change their spots or, um... <laughs> yeah, it's true. Once we see the red flags, uh, we need to take heed of that, right? They're showing us that for a reason. And so, um, Oh my gosh, I was just so, I couldn't even believe the malice and the criminal behaviors that at times were so, um, that I was dealing with. I felt like I was dealing with the insane, <laughs> truly. Oh my gosh, like the most psychopathic of the psychopaths, right, on the planet. And so, um, you know what I mean? You get it. And so we talk about narcissists and how, what is it, one in three or one in four people are narcissists. And so it used to be a long time ago, it was those, they were psychopaths. But um, now we've kind of changed them into something that is a little more acceptable. A narcissist just doesn't have that kind of inflammatory sound to it that a psychopath does. But um, anyway, um, I never realized that uh, for years, um, my sibling and my ex had been working together and uh, to destroy me as they smiled in my face. And so I had no idea because I we want to believe that when people smile and when they're nice and when they seem like they care, we believe that to be their authentic self, right? We believe that that's who they are. And so uh, when we realize that that's not the case at all, and um, I'll, I'll just give you a really quick example. I just thought of this now. And it was... Um, my ex had bought me a leather jacket for my birthday. And so it was my birthday's in September. And so it was, uh, we were going to a Northwestern football game because we were both Northwestern alums. And so we were taking our four children to a football game at, um, at, at the stadium there at the Ryan, Welsh Ryan Auditorium Stadium. And so um, we got in the car and and so, you know, as he said, oh, put on your leather jacket. Let's, it'll be, it'll be fun for you to wear that. It was a birthday present. And so he put, so I put it on and then he gets in the car. And so he's like, kids, look at your mom. She looks like such a slut. She's going to be on the prowl at the football game and wearing leather, no doubt. And so the kids were like, mom, why are you wearing leather? And so I just thought, wait a minute, this is like, I'm like in another dimension here. This is too crazy. And then later that night, he called my sister and he said, oh, you would not believe she's, she's like gone psycho. She wears leather now, you know, and she's got, uh, I think she's into dating bikers and, um, uh, and she's having affairs with bikers and she's got all these, this leather on with all these spikes and all this stuff and everything. And I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> 
I'm just, I'm living in a whole different place than they are, you know, but um, anyway, when we think of, of, um, of how uh, people actually track our every move and we think, of course, they're not going to do that because we would never do that. What do we care what people are doing, right? We are focused on ourselves and on how to become better humans, not worry about what everyone else is doing. What they're doing is just none of our business. And um, and so anyway, when you think that they're actually tracking our every move and that they're stalking us and they're listening to our conversations and they're reading our emails and um, I know that, you know, that's been very true. All of those things have been going on in my life and I didn't even know that for so long. And I bet a lot of other people don't know that that's going on in their life. Like maybe their spouse is after them or their spouse is surveying them. Or in my case, it was my spouse and my sibling who were kind of watching every move and then kind of, you know, um, kind of talking about it all and gossiping and everything. And I thought, oh my God, that's, that's crazy. But they also empty our, they also enter our post office boxes and our bank boxes. And don't ask me how that's allowed to happen. It's not supposed to happen and yet they do. And so <laughs> I remember hearing that my sibling actually called when, because on my phone, she knew when I had like a hairdresser appointment and a haircut. And uh, she called and I don't know how this actually happened, whether, you know, someone paid the hairdresser off or what, but um, they would like shred my hair and I'm still recovering from that because it just kept happening every time I went to a different place, you know. I have no idea. I'd make an appointment. I should have gone in without an appointment, maybe, and and <laughs> seen if maybe I could have gotten through that one, that little maze. But um, yeah, there are so many times I've I've mentioned that you know they do. They tamper our groceries and they even tamper with our restaurant orders. And I know on my bills, I've had to be very, uh, I've had to scrutinize my bank bills, my bank statements, actually, because um, if I would order something online, I would be double charged for it or um, something uh, would be interfered with it, uh, like my lab tests. I I uh, went to a gynecologist. Well, first I went to a primary care. And then I went to a gynecologist because I have pain in my lower right abdomen. And so I went to then a gynecologist and she said, yes, we'll do an ultrasound and see what's going on. Well, the ultrasound came back and they said they couldn't even find anything on on the right side of me. So they didn't even, uh, they didn't find anything in order to even take a scan there. So it was as if that part of my abdomen was void of any organs, which sounds bizarre. And they said, oh yes, there was a cyst on the left side. Well, I, I'm concerned about the right side, right? And so um, anyway, um, it's just not, um, we just don't want to hear that we're being, uh, that we're being maligned and that we're being, that even our medical care is interfered with. Um, hang on one second. There's just something that is not right with my computer here, uh, with the phone. Okay. And so including um, all our relationships. So when we think that maybe um, the person we're seeing is actually calling somebody else or they're getting calls from somebody else, you wouldn't think that actually um, it's a setup from someone who's actually trying to harm you, would you? I, I would never think of that. And so, but when we see that our relatives and our friends and our neighbors and our acquaintances and even, you know, in my case, like Greek priests and churches and uh, even our attorneys and our tax preparers and our car dealerships and even rental cars where we uh, might rent a car and even our storage, easy space storage and public storage, which is where I had storage units, you know, whoever I dealt with, um, uh, they were in, there was interference in those. I can't tell you how many times my storage units were uh, broken into. And when I would specifically get a storage unit, because, you know, I didn't have a home, so I ended up putting some things in storage, they would be broken into. Or the cameras, I would specifically make sure that there were cameras focused on the, the opening to the 
to the storage unit and then they'd say, uh, um, all of a sudden, I couldn't even get in because someone would have changed the lock. They would have broken into, like broken the lock and then put on a different lock. So either the combination or the key didn't work. And so I would say, well, it's a good thing you have 24 seven surveillance, right? And they'd say, oh, you know what? It's just not working. You know, all of a sudden, for some reason, that particular camera wasn't working. And I think, oh my gosh. And so in, in every, one of those cases that I just mentioned, I have had issues with. And so, you know, um, even my exact location based on on uh, the iPhone and, and uh, the computer of mine, that was all interfered with. And so, you know, had I not actually experienced this for, well, certainly the last 10 years, um, with a, with a sibling in full force, but before that with the ex and the sibling together, I, um, I would have never believed it. And yet, um, that happens to so many of us. I remember reading, I remember seeing somebody sent me a video at one time and it was, these people are having lunch and her phone is on the table. And all of a sudden there's, um, a screenshot of like 10 miles away or whatever, um, her her husband is listening to her conversations with her friends. And then they have a, a private eye who is watching her every move and he's tailing her and making reports to, to the people that are stalking her. And I'm thinking, this is just bizarre. We don't believe this. And so we can live in denial if we'd like. Right. And so I remember hearing someone actually told me that uh, that my sibling had hired nine, uh, nine muscle men um, that were in like those big trucks. They I think they call them pickup trucks, but they're not like those those rickety dink pickup trucks. I mean, these are big, beautiful uh, vehicles. I don't know if they're GMC. I remember seeing one that saw a Silverado or a four by four or whatever. They're really monster trucks, right? And they're driven by these huge muscle men. And so never in my entire life would I imagine that as I was parked, especially when I was living in my car, that these nine trucks would be encircling me doing like the most bizarre maneuvers. It was as if, you know, they were, it was as if they were military and they were, because they, they did it so well. And so, so I don't know who, I'm not sure who actually learns to do it that way. Um, but anyway, I know that, that that was happening to me. And so I was totally spooked out by the whole thing. And I thought, this is just absolutely mind boggling. Who would actually believe this? But then when you figure that if your every location is, is, um, is monitored and everything you do and every word you say and, and everywhere you go and everyone you talk to, I mean, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. And so if you should meet someone and maybe they invite you for coffee, all of a sudden, you know, before or after you find out that they just disappear from your life, even, I mean, as a friend or as a contact and all of a sudden, um, you you hear, you run into them or something, or they call you and they tell you, you know what, I just wanted to let you know, but I I accidentally or, or whatever um, met your sibling as she came up to me and I was like standing on the beach or whatever. And um, so uh, I, I thought that's just so weird. And so, and I thought, my goodness, now she's not looking for, um, for, a husband or or that I mean she's married to a Morton plant I'm in Tampa Florida um, in Clearwater Florida a Morton plant physician and so um, I can't imagine that she uh, is looking for um, anyway someone that I would know I and these were just my friends anyway or if her husband um, knows that she hooks up with um, my former friends Anyway, she's done such a great job of lying and defaming me that um, I usually then put those friends into my former friend file. Um, 
because I'm not going to waste my time defending myself when, when there's obviously money and sex being thrown around. And so, um, yeah, I've heard, I've, and I've heard this from others. You know, this isn't um, a figment of my imagination. I wish it were actually, but unfortunately, um, the cold hard truth is this is what I have been told. And so, um, and the, and it's about defaming me, and it's about defaming you, and it's about defaming the people who um, who somehow um, others become very jealous of for whatever reason. And so um, when they, and then they would repeat things to me uh, that they had been told about my life that were totally untrue. And so I saw it to be a lot of projection, you know, as if she were looking in the mirror um, as she was stalking and, and tampering with my food and, and forging my signatures on documents and, and stealing and lying and slandering and abusing. I mean, it's, we just can't even put our arms around it because it's just so, so disgusting, really. It's horrifying, actually. And so, um, and even when I had suffered um, medical malpractice or legal malpractice, you know, um, um, I realized that a lot of that had to do with um, it being kind of uh, strategically, uh, strategically manufactured. And so, um, I, you know, I think the stuff that she had told people is that I had had several uh, relationships and several men or whatever. And I mean, I, uh, anyway, that um, I imagined my traumatic brain injury and that my children weren't brainwashed and that I had millions and I squandered them on, on some loser I met in Brazil. And, and let's see what other crazy things can I share with you? Anyway, um, never, never in my entire life could I have imagined that my sibling actually would also be involved in, in the, um, um, in the untimely deaths of my parents. And I know you've probably heard about that in my previous videos. And never, never um, would I have imagined that a sibling would uh, lie and cheat and steal and brainwash my children um, into really hating their mother who loves them so. And um, I would never have imagined that a sibling would deny that my parents had left us both um, as such a fortune that we were to split 50-50. And so um, never, never would I have imagined that my son would uh, steal uh, so many things that, um, that belonged to me, um, both in an inheritance and just in my own personal possessions. Um, and so I just, um, the perjury and it was just all over the top and so bizarre. And I felt like I was watching Jack Nicholson go from one flew over the cuckoo's nest to the shining because it's one thing to, to be so insane and to do, to do such malevolent behaviors. Uh, and yet it's another thing to just really, really, um, do things that are just so hateful and so um i know it sounds strange but it's true and yet so many people um have no shame you know they act like total nutcases and so when i say that um i've been told that uh there are creepos and stalkers that enter my residence and tamper my food uh, you know, or one person told me he was offered $2 million to do me in. And so I guess I'm sharing all of this because, you know, some people don't think that the FBI files are really true uh, because they're so outrageous and you think, oh, that just happens to them. But really, on a, on a relative basis, it happens to many, many, many of us. And so, uh, you know, these are, uh, I'm giving you very gripping examples, and yet um, I'm not alone. And so that's why I feel like I have to share this. And you might think, oh, well, you know, I know she, I know they stole her inheritance. They stole her divorce, um, her, um, yes, her marital estate. They stole her parents' estate. You know, they stole her children. They stole her home. They stole all her finances, all her resources. Yes, I know we've heard all this before. And yet, you know, when I, um, 
when I actually do some research and I realize that um, that such a large percentage, and I probably should have uh, documented the percentage, but so many, such a large percentage of us have been stalked and have this happens in real life. So this isn't just some theoretical thing. And I know that I, I just keep honing in on it because I, I don't believe that um, most people understand just the, um, the severity of it and the consequences of it in your own life. And so I know that I saw my mother pushed over the edge and um, she was terrified in the middle of the night while she was asleep because she lived in a condo and um, there were two heavy wooden doors. It, it was beautiful. And so, but in the middle of the night, uh, someone would apparently open the door and then it would slam shut. And so my mother would awaken in the middle of the night and wonder who was in her condo. And she was scared to death. And she thought, this isn't safe. So as I, I think I mentioned, she used to take her jewels and put them in a case and sleep with them. They would be in the king size bed you know, at the base of the bed, I think, uh, while she slept in that bed with my father. And so, um, or if they went to uh, the grocery store during the day and then they'd come back and the furniture would be, um, would be moved. And so these are little things, but that really pushed her in, pushed her over the edge. And she was terrified and she ended up going into a facility um, because uh, there, I think she felt safer. She was just so tortured, actually, you know. Um, and so, and even my father, that's how crazy it was there. Um, and even my father in a deposition said that um, there was so much static on his phone that he um, could barely hear. And he attributed to my ex and the sibling. And so um, he... It was as if, um, I mean, he was tortured, right? And so, again, as for um, as for the sibling, you'd think that her husband would have noticed some of this bizarre behavior and gotten her some help. And I, I do, um, I do think that a lot of people are out there walking around and doing really uh, malicious things to others because they, because perhaps they just don't feel whole within themselves. I'm not diagnosing anyone. I'm just saying that what would cause someone to spend so much of their time uh, stalking another human being, especially a family member, and then just plotting ways on how they could steal their her things and then live among all of her things. Because I've heard that my things are, you know, she has all of my things in, in her residences and they don't even know that they're my things. I don't know if they think she went and bought this stuff or what, but um, it, it's just, it's just insane. And so, and I even heard she limits my viewing audience. So I don't know how many people are actually going to even see this, but whether they see it on Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo or my website, mariahady.com or, or anywhere else, um, I know that um, when someone does something like that, they certainly don't want other people to know about that, right? And so, but the truth is, is that we're all held accountable, right? And so for our actions, and so karma is the energy of what we send out to others comes back to us. And so it comes back to sender. And so, um, there are heavenly energies around us, right? And it's easier, if it's easier for you to envision the eyes in the sky that are watching everything we do. And so therefore, do your best, be your best. And so um, even the dark, all the dark actions, including the slander and the lies and the cheating and the sabotaging, they all come back to the perpetrator, as does the truth, right? So the goodness and the kindness and the consideration and the help that we give to another, Remember when Elvis said, uh, saying, return to sender? Can you imagine that he had it figured out way back when? And so um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the flying monkeys because that's the sabotage um, 
in the daily life that we have when the people that we allow into our circle, when all of a sudden we realize that they never really wanted us to to succeed and that they were behind the scenes kind of sabotaging things. And we think, wow, we would never do that. So how could we possibly even think anyone else would do that? Right? But we have we we really do have to kind of forgive them because and again it's not the forgiveness of, oh, I forgive you, come here, hug, hug, I know you'll never do it again. It's that I forgive you for me, and so therefore I'm going to keep you at bay. I'm not going to participate in, um, in that kind of negative energy. And so, you know, many of us have been gang stalked, and so we didn't even know what that was what that was or what that was called, right? And so the dark wants to interfere in our work or in our mission. And it seems that whenever someone wanted to help me or move for, help me move forward after all of this stuff was taken, their adult son or daughter um, would suddenly call in need of some money, right? Or with a fake crisis. Um, or with a, a huge credit card bill, or a job loss, or a visit, or a place to stay, right? So it then uh, became a huge, I then became a huge burden. So, um, so that was how, because the person then had to worry about his own issues. And so um, even if we were just friends, well, that was mostly the case. And so, um, they would say, oh, well, here, you know, if I can help you in any way. And so I was, of course, just absolutely delighted to hear that come out of the mouth of someone because I had always done that when, I can't say always, but I had done that quite often when someone needed my help. And so I was very um, appreciative when someone would help me. And yet um, it seemed that all of a sudden there were these newly recruited uh, flying monkeys that uh, kind of scared uh, friends into um, helping me. And so they, they didn't. And so ultimately, you know, that was probably in my best interest and I just didn't know it at the time. And so um, as for the flying monkeys that had uh, secret meetings and wild get togethers to cheer the pain and the losses they created for us, you know, they were paid dirty money, which um, we all know has a lot of negative karma attached to it. It's stolen money and the giver has no right to give that because it was never theirs in the first place, right? And so obviously that's true of an inheritance. If you didn't get your inheritance, it seems like more and more I hear about people people being cheated out of their inheritance. And I'm not sure how that is allowed to happen uh, in so many cases. I mean, mine I thought was a very um, over the top, <laughs> ridiculous, um, horrible situation with so much criminality. And yet when I hear that it, it's, um, it is just so common, I am just horrified that our legal system allows all of that to go on and that's something that needs to be addressed. And so um, so that money, um, the money that is stolen from us um, can't rightfully be given to anyone of, by anyone other than by us because uh, otherwise it's stolen money, right? And so I know I'm kind of rambling on this, but um, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. And so I want to make sure that, that I'm repeating it enough times so that you can really understand that it's not isolated for whatever things have gone on in your life, whether it's related to a job or a relationship or a family situation or even a health crisis. I mean, we're talking about um, the gamut of things that we on earth um, that human beings on earth uh, deal with. And whether, um, I had also heard that that both in Clearwater and in, and in Chicago, there were dinners and celebrations at my favorite restaurants as um, with bunches of my former friends um, who were involved in doing poverty and illness spells. I mean, that's just so horrible. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that people do that stuff. And so these people are so sick. 
And so, um, and, you know, doing the black magic and the voodoo and all that crap intended to harm us. And so, um, I just know, and I, I absolutely believe that it all does then, uh, go back on the people that are the perpetrators of it because, um, because it just has to, that is just, we don't have that much power to, um, to destroy the lives of others in that way. And so I do believe that, that our divine, that divine beings, that our angels and, and heavenly beings and ancestors and, um, uh, and the saints and the archangels and, and all the benevolent energies out there, I do believe that they then do step in. I mean, you've heard of divine intervention. And so a lot of times um, we have to trust that the universe is in perfect order. And uh, I know when I had a clear water stalker, this is before I realized that there were so many other stalkers. This was someone that I knew and uh, who ended up, um, when uh we had an argument he he said oh i'm going to team up with um with your ex to ruin you and so um he did he ended up teaming up with the ex and the sibling and lo and behold he was an invited guest at my mother's funeral when i wasn't even invited to to go um however i did go because an attorney um arranged my uh, my presence there but um can you just even imagine how um how people would do that uh to to just be be malicious to hurt someone and so when you think when i think of you know all my intellectual property all my thumb drives and my books and things i've written and things on my desk that have been stolen and um and they just, I don't know if they think that they, maybe they've already used it. Maybe they've already put it on the internet. Maybe they've just claimed ownership of it. I don't know. I guess I, I don't even, I don't, um, I purposely just don't uh, want to research that, although I probably should. But um, in terms of like the toast, they toast actually, and they're hooting and hollering and clapping and cheering as they gloat at the pain that they've caused us. And so, and one of the things that I notice that they do is that um, when you have like this group and they really are kind of, um, um, they kind of, it's like, um, like a little cult or something, but, um, they call each other brother. And so um, it's almost as if they're in some kind of like a, a woman hating misogynistic cult of sorts, you know, and I was told that that that's what they do because they they then get everybody on on board to kind of um, target someone. And so they do that. It's generally a woman that maybe has left one of them or there's a divorce or something like that. And so that person, you know, puts out a lot of hatred. And so then he ends up getting all kinds of other people. And I know that I had been told that my sibling actually gets the men together, um, you know, and they have like these meetings and they talk and they share emails and stuff and uh, share clone phones of mine. And then if they read something that I've written and then they all kind of gossip about it. And it's just like, it's so creepy. It's just so disgusting. But, um, you know, there's really nothing we can do about it as long as we, we have um, an iPhone or we have an Android or we have any kind of a phone, any kind of electronic you know, can be hacked into. I mean, if people on the other side of the world can hack into it, you can bet that um, people nearby or in, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter how far you are, right? And so um, I also did hear that in my case, they had two men who would visit neighbors um, of where I was staying. And um, they would call them and they'd say, you know what, I know you really care about your friend. And so we're just letting you know that she's just a really horrible person. And so keep your eye on him and stuff. And, and if you see her, whatever, we want you to document 
whatever she does because we're following her, monitoring. And so they do. They actually became the monkeys and they think that they're doing the right thing, right? Or they'll say, you know, she has some mental issues and so we really need to know what's going on uh, for her safety and for the safety of, of your friend who she's living with. And so, um, so if you'd be so kind as to do that and we'd be happy to compensate you with a lot of money. Um, they don't tell them it belongs to me, but yeah. And so they, they have then access to, um, to my, um, to my phone and to my computer and to all my privacy. And so, and then they have, um, cameras. And so, um, and you know, and the list kept growing because everywhere I'd go. And so when I realized that, um, Actually, their Clearwater attorney was in Ashland, Oregon, where I was living for a while, and I, I was told this. And um, and there were phone conversations there and in California where people I knew were contacted by Mike. And so um, Mike happened to be the name of an attorney that my ex had used, and, and then my son used him. And uh, I assume my sister did, but I really don't know. I know she had her own her own um, attorney that would do pretty much whatever she told him to do or, or whatever he did certainly was in her favor. Anyway, in terms of, uh, all the forgery and stuff. But anyway, um, I realized that all were attempts to isolate me. And so that's what they do. It's called shunning and shunning is, is something that they do in uh, cults like i think if you've heard of anything um about scientology you know scientology um uh, believes in shunning because when someone leaves that cult they want to um they want to isolate them and um uh, and so and to kind of defame them or to um to make them sorry that they left that's what i've heard i don't know uh, I did have a friend who was an, a Scientologist and he said, yes, they do that. So that, um, that person, you know, is, feels the punishment of, of his leaving or of their leaving. But, you know, uh, it's, I think many of us have been shunned, right? And so we've experienced shunning because it's, um, it's kind of being, by being defamed, you really do feel isolated. And so, um, yeah, I had experienced that, and um, and so um, it, they do say, oh, you know, oh, she's delusional. We don't, we never really did that. Well, you know, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps you never did that, or perhaps you're going to say that you never did that, or perhaps you're so delusional that you don't believe you've done anything wrong, right? Because that allows you to continue your criminality, your criminal behavior. But anyway, we're kind of on a roll here. But um, uh, let's go to number 25 and uh, let's hear more about standing strong and telling the truth, no matter the cost, because we are here to elevate the energy of ourselves and of those around us and to show more light, to be more light and to um, help others see that that harming another human being is not is not the appropriate thing to do and whether it's another human being or it's an animal whether it's a kitten or a puppy or um a dog or a bird or um i know where i am now there's a raccoon that comes in to eat the cat food and so you know um it's you just don't want to hurt that animal you don't you just want him to kind of move on but um, we just all want to be safe in telling the truth. And so, um, you know, we need to stand proud and be proud of, of all the things that we've experienced that, um, that we've overcome. Because every day we are um, faced with different challenges. And every day we can shine brighter. And so I am so proud of so many people who, um, who have embodied um, what they know to be truth. And so um, anyway, let's go to number 25. And um, I just want you to know that I feel so very blessed to have you all in my life. And so I, I thank you so very much. And so I love you. Bye.